Hi, I'm Paul Bradbury. I'm a pioneer down in Poole on the south coast and um, work for CMS a couple of days a week supporting pioneers across the south of England and um, myself and Tina building on some work by Richard Passmore developed the Pioneer Spectrum um, which has been used and shared quite widely to help pioneers um, identify themselves and help people involved in vocations work with pioneers in their kind of vocational discernment. So yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the Pioneer Spectrum and um, dig into a little bit of its theology as well. So there's the Pioneer Spectrum. And all we did really was we were recognizing that lots of different pioneers were emerging. There's not, the pioneers are a whole host of different things. Um, but we were beginning to recognize that it was possible to sort of map different pioneers on, on a kind of spectrum of what we call cultural distance. And cultural distance is just a, just a way of expressing the reality that um, we live in a multicultural world and um, church is a culture. Church is a culture that many of us feel at home in and walking into other cultures feels alien and some cultures feel more alien than others. And so in a sense, they're at a greater cultural distance um, from the home of church. And so if you imagine all those different cultures as a kind of spectrum going further and further away from the home of church, then the more you go in that direction, the more contextualization, the more attention is required um, to make connections between the gospel and that culture. So starting on the left, we were finding that um, some people involved in kind of traditional church plants um, or some pioneers were doing this sort of work um, and uh, really that's um, sorry about that really that's you know the sort of more traditional church planting of uh, taking a group of people from a, a larger congregation and starting a new congregation in the church down the road or in, in, in a church a number of miles away uh, but it was essentially replicating, it's essentially replicating a model of church. There's a very clear end in mind, which is replicating what's been successful elsewhere. There may be some adaptation, um, but uh, it, it's very clear what, what is uh, the, the, the end of that process. But moving further to the right, the, what we call pioneer adapters are those who have that gift uh, to adapt church um, perhaps to a slightly different cultural context. Um, they, but it does start with church and it starts with um, adapting a worship service in, in a way that might make it more culturally accessible to a different group of people. So messy church and cafe church kind of fit that kind of model. But further to the right, we talked about pioneer innovators. Now, these are a different kettle of fish, I think, because pioneer innovators are those who kind of are willing to let go of models of church and are willing to go on a personal and um, kind of uh, ecclesiological journey, if you like, of letting go uh, of all sorts of assumptions and presuppositions and take a, take a journey into a culture where they need to learn, they need to listen, uh, they need to build relationship. They need to make creative connections between that context and the gospel and allow, allow church to emerge in a way that suits and fits that context. And out of this, um, some models are beginning to emerge like missional community or near monastic community, emergent church, um, and some particular vocations. So I we felt it was really important to give space to those those pioneers who are journeying with spiritual seekers, neo-pagans or people who are kind of mixing um, spiritualities and elements from different religions to create their own religion in very much a postmodern context. Um, those networks and those communities exist, many of them online. How are we connecting with, with those? Well, there are people called to that sort of ministry and um, it's it felt really important to, 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 to recognise that. And then finally, to the to the right, um, but kind of in this space, really, um, 
culturally, but we needed to give them the, their own space in the diagram of pioneer activists. And quite a few people are training um, at CMS who we would see as pioneer activists. And they're not seeking to plant a church necessarily. Um, what they want to do is venture into secular space and grow something, probably a social enterprise or a social, social business that exemplifies something of the kingdom of God, that, that demonstrates, that embodies something of who God and his kingdom uh, is. So you'll see that we put these outside of a box that's labelled church planting um, and that within the church planting box we recognise that that these guys that show some degree of willingness to adapt and um, to innovate would, 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 would fit the description of fresh expressions of church. Um, But it, I also wanted to um, make a distinction between these guys who are church planters, but who tend to start with church. They start with either an expression of worship or um, a successful model of church and, and bring it into a new, con a new context. And so for, for them, church planting is, is a bit more of a planned process. We kind of know what we're aiming at. We have a model that we're trying to um, bring into being in this place. Whereas these guys are on much more of a journey and uh, church planting is done in much more of an organic way. Some people wouldn't want to call it church planting. I would say it is church planting, but it's, it's putting quite a big degree of dif distance between planting and church. We're allowing church to emerge. We're planting a seed. We're planting the gospel, really. We're planting the DNA of the gospel um, and trusting that church will emerge over time. So the, a spectrum is something that's created by light refracting through a prism or through, uh, through a glass lens and it splits the light into lots of different colours. And actually what goes into the spectrum, uh, what's underneath the spectrum is a recognition that um, people come with all sorts of gifts and personalities and differences of approach that are appropriate to different contexts uh, to enable new expressions of church and mission to, to come into being in those in those contexts. And it's a bit like I wear glasses. And when you go to the optician, they put one of these horrible things in front of your eyes and they slip different kind of lenses in front of your eyes to enable you to see um, those horrible letters on the wall that, that go down to these tiny things that you can no longer see until they slip those lenses in and suddenly you can read the letters um, at the bottom. And um, in the same way, I think, there are various lenses that we bring to our ministry that help us to see and to see in particularly different ways um, and that kind of split the light of the gospel, if you like, into, into lots of different, um, into a spectrum of light that uh, then is expressed in different contexts. Let me explain what I mean. So one of those lenses, for example, that we bring and that we look through in our missional leadership is the lens of principle. In other words, that we bring with us particular theologies and particular understandings of church that we embrace or that we think um, are appropriate and that, that we have kind of embodied if you like and that we feel strongly about and we'll bring those into that context. Um, we'll also bring uh, and this is related to principle a posture and a practice so how, how do we go about our mission and our ministry what is our posture in this context um, um, how, yeah, how, how do we go about the, the task of, um, of connecting people with the gospel uh, and, or, or, or expressing the kingdom of God in this place? 
And the other lens is our personality, that God has created us as particular people. And some people are like one kind of personality and some people are another. Um, now that will be shaped. There will be some things that are deeply hardwired within us, but, in, but some of our personality and, and uh, approaches to things will be shaped by our history and by the different communities and contexts that we've been in. But that is something that we will bring um, as pioneers into a place. And all of those things come together to create the pioneer spectrum, to create people who are different and who express missional leadership in the church in different ways that call us, I believe, into different contexts where we might enable the gospel to flourish. So we're just going to briefly dig a little bit into some of these lenses. So the lens of principle um, is a sort of lens between an applied theology and something of a more emergent theology. Let me explain a little bit about what I mean by that. Because on one end of the spectrum, you have um, a, a theology that, re that, who, that where the preference is to recognise God as knowable. We know things about God and therefore we can tell other people about the things that we know about God with a degree of certainty and with a degree of authority. It tends to go with an understanding of discipleship as an event that we've taken on these knowable and certain things about God um, and about Jesus and we have started on a journey. We have, start, we have become a Christian, we, have, we are saved and now we are in the church. So a church becomes very important in this theology, in this theology and, the, and this theology of mission. Um, mission is, is orientated predominantly around the church and what the church is and what the church does. So it's a, a church shaped kingdom. If the church is about is, is about um, enabling the kingdom of God to grow, it's the church that's the main agent of the kingdom. And so the church as an organisation is really important and its structures and its processes are really important. And at the other end of the spectrum, recognising this is a spectrum, it's not like there is one kind of uh, theology and there's another. Um, the, the, this, this not, it's not as, uh, as, as dualistic as that. But at the other end of the spectrum, perhaps it's people who embrace God much more as mystery. There's, there's as much we don't know about God as what we do know about God. And there's, there's, there's room. In fact, we, we, would, we value the room for questions and for doubt and for, un, and for the unknownness of God. Discipleship is therefore much more a journey. Um, you know, we might be seeking. We, we're not quite sure what we do know, um, but we're willing to go on the journey. Um, and to have Christ as our guide. It has much more of a sense of the kingdom as the most important thing, and that God in his mystery is already at work in the world, and the job of the church is to sort of discern where God is, is at work and join in with him. God is not the, um, the custo is not, is not the, um, the is, is just the um, commodity of the church. God, God in his mystery is, is, is all over the place in mission and our job is to try and work with that and work um, um, and discern where he is at work. So the church is much more an organism. The relationships of the church are much more important than the structures of the church. And church can be found in all sorts of different places, not just the institution that identifies where the church is. The second lens that's related to it is about posture and practice, about how we go about the business of doing mission. And on one end is much more of an application. So we know these things about God and therefore we apply them to the context because we have a strong sense of knowing what's good for the context. Um, so because church is important, it's about encouraging people to come to church. So it's much generally much more of an attractional mode of mission. Come to this, this wonderful thing that we've laid on for you or if not it can be a bit more of an engaged approach it's about starting um, services of social action and social engagement um, with the view of bringing people into the church the church uh, so we're much more comfortable with things that are formed we are much more um, 
uh, we're much more likely to embrace the status quo you know thing, things that are set up and, uh, and 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 able to continue doing what they're doing successfully and so sustainability is really important to us and again at the other end of the spectrum is much more of an incarnational mode of mission that we need to make a journey into another context and learn from that context um, we don't have all the answers um, we don't necessarily assume that what we have is exactly what people want and we need to listen and we need to engage and we need to build relationships um, therefore church is a kind of fragile thing because it's always um, it's always adapting um, and once it gets too solid and too, too formal there's a danger that we're excluding as many people as we're including so fragility is actually something to be welcomed similarly the edge of chaos so rather than being so ordered and that we that we're slow to adapt or so chaotic that we don't get anything done we we, we are willing to embrace that kind of edge of chaos that kind of liminal space between order and chaos where very often creative and innovative things take place and therefore there's a there's a value for adaptability and the third lens is the lens of personality um, and on a broad spectrum you might say that uh, there are those of us who like to be managers who like things that are structured and we know where we are and those who embrace much more of a mystery or a mystic kind of personality which is open to doubt and questions and uh, and uncertainty so managers tend to be more directive they tend to uh, be driven by results they tend to like operations and systems and procedures and they tend to like things to stay as they are so they're much more settled whereas at the other end the, the mystic is much more facilitative happy to work with a whole range of people um, and see where things go probably driven much more by relationships than results uh, probably more on the creative side than the op than the operative side and then probably a bit more of a nomad somebody who's willing to, to kind of see where things go see where uh, the spirit takes them um, and, and not rooted to um, one place for any length of time So all of these sort of these three lenses kind of create the pioneer spectrum, um, embracing a whole host of different theologies, um, a different set of postures and practices, uh, a whole range of personalities create this wide range of different people um, attuned or uh, in, in, you know much more adept in different circumstances perhaps than others. But all of this needs to happen, of course, in context. And there's another couple of lenses that I think are really important. One is paradigm, by which I mean kind of culture. What is the culture of the place in which you're ministering? And the, and the, and the second one is people in place. What kind, what's the geography here? What kind of people live here? What kind of place is this? Uh, what shapes it? Um, and as pioneers, it's about listening to the culture that we're in. And very um, clunkily, there are kind of three main paradigms of culture, pre-modern, modern, and post and late modern. And actually we live in a world where all three of those cultures still exist in one form or another. So pre-modern you want, might relate to kind of like the small village, traditional, uh, very conservative kind of culture where things have stayed the same for a long time and people want them to stay the, the, the same for a long time. This is the culture in which the parish church emerged um, in the Middle Ages and medieval times. And then moving into much more of a modern um, uh, culture, that was a time when um, there was a much more of a divide between the sacred and the secular. And um, community became much more based around um, the office or the factory and church was very very important to those sorts of communities but it was increasingly becoming a community of choice rather than an assumption that that was the kind of within the warp and weft of our culture and then moving into the post or late modern culture community is much more networked it's much more fluid it's much more blended the internet is becoming a hugely important part of our culture. Um, and church, which was very much at the center of culture, is now 
uh, is is now somewhere on the edge, perhaps exiled in our culture, and is and and has perhaps a place at the table about how decisions are made and what the story of our culture is. But it's one place amongst many. And what you'll probably recognise in listening to the your own context is that some one of those uh, will dominate, but there'll be elements um, of all three. And then the other lens is the lens of people in place. And that's the classic task um, of listening to our context and listening to the different aspects of what make a place a place and what kind of people live in that place. Are they educated? Um, do they exist in more of a kind of neighborhood or more of a network? What kind of level of employment is there? What's, is, what level of poverty, ethnic diversity, religious diversity, age, social mobility? All of those sorts of things need listening to, to get just to begin to get a feel um, for the sort of place that we're ministering in. So that puts us in a situation where we've got the pioneer spectrum then um, coming into context and causing, um, we pray, a whole range of expressions of kingdom life, um, social enterprises, um, expressions of mission uh, and communities of discipleship. And I love this quote from Rowan Williams. He says, church is what happens when people encounter the risen Jesus and commit themselves to sustaining and deepening that encounter in their encounter with each other. And I like that quote for two reasons, or two words. One word is happen. Church is what happens. Because sometimes we fall into the mistake of thinking that church is this thing. Uh, church is this kind of monolith. Um, church is this normative thing that needs to be the sort of juggernauts through culture. Whereas actually church is something that happens. There's a contingency about church. Church emerges through relationship. Church emerges through the relationship between people and their encounter with Jesus and their encounter with the Holy Spirit in their culture and therefore has any number of possibilities of what it can look like. And the other, so the other related word to that is encounter because it's in the encounter in the connections between people and the gospel and the holy spirit and their culture that church happens and then as a result you get this wonderful ecology of church of different expressions of church that 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 need to relate to one another that need to connect with one another um, and actually that the church in its whole in its richness in its in its sort of best expression of who it is is this is this ecology of different expressions of church that that are suitable for their own culture for their own context um, relating and um, supporting one another so i hope that helps in um, exploring the pioneer spectrum it's more than just saying what kind of pioneers there are because it's actually about recognizing that pioneering is about listening to context. Pioneering is continuing in that tradition that has taken place right from the very beginning of the church um, of people making a, a journey into a new culture and finding that church is what happens when people encounter the risen Jesus. So yes, I hope you found that helpful and um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend uh, exploring Pioneer Mission.